everybody, it is Kalax in here, and today we are going to be talking about uh, Agent. He's one of my moderators on the Discord server, got a couple video tickets, I accidentally promised him some things. And, uh, accidentally. No, because I didn't think he would be a Patreon, and so I just wanted to kind of give him a freebie because I thought his thing was interesting, you know? And then he was just like, oh, well, now I get two videos and my Patreon ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I see. It was interesting. Crafty anyway. Bastard. So this is his theory. He's titled it Faunus Magnet. We probably won't call it that. Thank you to my Patreons, by the way. Um, I want to call it the Faunus Negativity Theory, personally. Um, so we'll see. I'll see if this furthers the, gen uh, the genre, the journey. Of, of you of not Hunter, knowing what's going on? Yeah. Of me not knowing what, what videos are doing, and also me trying to win as, as Ren. As In the world of Remnant episode Faunus, Crow mentions that rumors spread that rumors spread to anger and that drove and that drove the faunus out of towns all sorts of rumors and stories surrounded the faunus people avoided them like the plague pushing them out of settlements and sometimes even hunting them down quote unquote a theory that i've developed this is agent uh, is that faunus were seen as a kind of grim magnet something that attracts grim and encourages them to attack towns this would inevitably result in the faunus being treated terribly thus Promoting those faunas to, ha to have negative emotions, and as we currently know, Grim are attracted to negative emotions, which would result in the sequence of events developing into a self-fulfilling prophecy. So basically what Agent is saying is that people saw the faunas as negative and treated them badly, which means that the Grim came because uh, they were are attracted to negative emotions of like the regular people. Then the Faunus would get upset because they're being treated badly and that would also att attract the Grim, which would cause the Grim to come and then it's a cycle of negativity. You with me? Yeah, I'm with you. A self-fulfilling prophecy is a prediction that directly or indirectly causes itself to become true. The self-fulfilling prophecy is, in the beginning, a false definition of the situation invoking a new behavior which makes the original false conception come true. This, uh, val this species? What is this? I don't have my glasses on. This Sorry, species. guys. This species. Validity of the self-fulfilling prophecy perpetuates a reign of error. For the prophet, for the prophet will cite the actual course of events as proof that he was right from the very beginning, sociologist Robert K. Merton. And so basically saying that, um... The concept frequently occurs in both fiction and real life. In fact, it's a major concept of sociology, the study of human, of human society, and as a result, there's countless examples of it. So basically, what that's saying is that the faunus were falsely identified as attracting the grim, and so that started to become true because of the negative emotions instead brought by that situation, which attracted the grim. And so they think that they're right, but they're incorrect. Yes? Yes. So the rumors of the faunus attracted the Grim, which would result in the faunus being mistreated and would turn, would in turn attract Grim. By humans trying to avoid something undesirable, they would inevitably cause it, and the faunus would be the unfortunate victims of such ignorance. That's a really good line. Good job, Agent. I like that. This also explains why instead of immediately taking advantage of the faunus, because they can see in the dark and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, not written can down see in there. The dark and shit. Uh -huh. Humans instead pushed them out of towns and hunted them down because of the rumors that they attracted Grim. But not in the night, because they couldn't see in the dark. Well, they tried that, and then the general died, or whatever. Yeah. If this were a canon thing, then I highly doubt such a powerful stereotype would have been phased out completely by the time of the Faunus War. In our own real-life history, it's been proven that these things can resurface and result in terrible consequences. In this case, it could have been one of the driving elements of the Faunus War, quite possibly being one of the greatest reasons why the Faunus were driven away from inhabitable con from inhabited continents entirely out into a uh, menagerie. This would perhaps give more of a meaning in the episode No Breaks where, where the White Fang and Roman Torchwick attempt to attack Vale by attracting Grimm through the use of explosives set up in the underground train. Knowing Adam's pleasure of symbolism, having it been implied that the reasons of the White Fang now were Grim mass, they treated us as monsters so we decided to don the face of them as Blake says, uh, it, seems, it seems that likely he played a part in processing uh, such an attack to deliver more of his dark symbolism. They blamed us for attracting the Grim, so we'll deliver on their belief by intentionally attacking them with Grim for revenge. It definitely seems to fit Adam's thought process. I actually really like that. That just gave me chills. <laughs> no, seriously, because think about it. 
you stereotyped us, we've now become your stereotype. You said we attracted the things that killed you, and so now we are actually going to, right? Like, I feel like that's, mm, like, I like that, that's nice. Uh, I love you, Agent, I'm sorry. <laughs> looking at the event, looking at the this event like this, it seems possible that this was the desired outcome that Adam came up with. Of course, this in addition is more a crackpot theory than anything else. No, I think that makes a lot of sense, Agent. Like, I feel like that works, and that's why they keep uh, bringing- Because every time we've seen Grimm brought into the city, it's by the White Fang, right? It's not by Cinder and her people, it's always the White Fang, like, air carts and stuff that bring the Grimm into the city, and so I feel like that's really strong and really powerful and stuff. I mean, so what do you think of this? they help from Cinder, yeah. Yeah, but, like, you know what I mean, right? Is that they're the ones bringing in the Grimm, right? No, Cinder also... never explicitly tells them to do that. Mm -hmm. So right. they are doing it on their own for some reason, and I think that's why. I agree. I think that is something that Adam would say. I mean, I also don't doubt that it would help, but um, <laughs> extra hands on the ground, you know, and all. Yeah. Also, I feel like that this sort of meshes nicely with our Nuzlocke. Nuzlocke. Nuck Nuck. Nuck Nuck. Yes! I re that's why Agent told me this, because he's like, this, kind of, this sounds kind of ridiculous, because, like, unless humans were colorblind or something, so a couple people said that, like, unless humans couldn't see pattern or something, the Grim don't really look anything like the Faunus, like, even the Imp Grim. Um, and so Agent was like, here's my theory, and I was like, I like your theory better than it, I like my theory. Because it helps my theory. Well, no, I like it better than my theory, but it does fit in very well, you're right. <laughs> it does. It would bring connotations but of, But they know. could coexist, or only one of them's correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, or neither of them's correct, I guess. I didn't think about that. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? I think that this has very... Powerful symbolism. I wouldn't put it past Miles and Carrie to do this. It makes a lot of sense. The Grimmer are attracted by negative emotions, so, like, I think the simplest answer, like, what is that called again? The simplest answer. Razor. Yeah. The simplest answer is usually, like, the answer, correct the one. correct answer. And so the simple answer is when the humans were being mean against the Faunus, like, monsters came. And then they associated that bad experience. It's like conditioning, right? They associated mm -hmm. that bad experience with the Faunus from now on, and that surpassed, like, generations and time and shit. I just, I enjoy this. Like, I really like this theory. It's one of the favorite things that we've ever covered on the channel. Like, entirely. Um, I don't know. Like, how would you see this working out in the future, though? Like, do you think Adam would say that as part of a speech? I feel like that would be pretty like ham-fisted. I like the idea of it just keeping it how it is now. Is like I'd like Adam to say a line like that, but, like, without any context, you know what I mean? Like, I I wouldn't want, like, a funnest history. Like, and then have... <laughs> funnest history with Professor Adam. Yeah, and then have he the... Gets you know what I mean? And then have, like, this entire, like thing that Agent is saying, like, just throw, like, exposition, you know what I mean? I would like Adam to say that one line so we can then interpret it. Does that make sense? I don't want someone to be like, back in the day when the Faunus were treated badly, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know what I mean? I don't want anyone to do that, as but As far I as I can tell, they've always been treated badly, but... I know. And I but you know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be like that. I don't want it to be like, here's all this information you now have to process. I want there to be one line, and I want fans to fight about what it means. This ain't your daddy's metaphor for racism. But you know what I mean, right? And so, yeah, would yeah, you think it's better that way? I, yeah, I agree with you that I think so. I think subtlety's always better. Yeah, and so I think as long as they're subtle, then it works, right? <laughs> and even as it stands, it's quite subtle, so I, yeah, I enjoy it. Sometimes I wonder if the Ruby writing team stumbles on this more than anything, but I dig it. I know, I really, I just, I enjoy this, you know? Like, I just, I enjoy my life. I enjoy nice making that... these videos, you know? I just, I enjoy this theory crafting that we have going on, especially in my Discord chat lately, because, like, you guys are so creative and you think of so many cool things. You're way more involved. I like how these people pay us and then they're more involved than I am. Well, it's okay. We're just here to show up. Uh, anyway, I mean, paid you, as I mentioned. Before. Anyway, guys, um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, there will be more video like this in the future, where if you have a theory, you can uh, use Patreon to kind of send it in, or maybe have friends with lots of video tickets. Um, I think the highest video ticket count someone got from our user awards event was 12. Hunter also has 12, because I gave him all mine. Hunter, you have 12 videos that you can do whatever we want. Whatever we want to, I thought they were mine. No, but like, what, whatever 
I, we, you I, want I, us I am a to person. record, I should say. I am a person. That's what I mean. A singular individual. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like, um, we can do whatever you want, is what I mean. To record. I see. Yeah. So, like, I could have a hunter appreciation hour. You talked about this already, and I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> when there are so many other wonderful things to talk about. Uh, so, yeah, if you have a friend with a lot of video tickets, hit them up. Make them do stuff for you. Come join our Discord server so you can have them do that. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this theory video. And is that it? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.